All right, everyone. So for day one, social media for your business. Uh, we're going to cover Twitter. So Twitter has been around for more than 10 years. Uh, they were founded, I think, in 2006 or so. They've been around a while. So Twitter is one of many social networks out at the moment. For a long time, the unique selling point or the uniqueness of Twitter was that it was 140 characters, which has now evolved to double the space of, what is that, 280. So before, to 140, now, 280 characters. So that includes spaces, symbols, emoji, 280 characters. So you have this small amount of space to get your message across. Twitter, like all social networks, is marketing platform. Meaning Facebook's a marketing platform, and Instagram's a marketing platform. But wait a minute, Facebook is where I connect with friends and family, and Instagram is where I share what I had for breakfast. Well, marketing platform for businesses, but social network for friends and family. So we're thinking about all of these social networks as a marketing platform, as a marketing tool. Perhaps, what's another term for marketing? Promotion. Promotion, branding, <coughs> advertising, marketing. So uh, then Twitter and all the networks are a way to promote my business, are a way to put out the brand of my business, are a way to advertise my business. So as I said, whenever we cover one network, a lot of what we learn about that network can apply to various degrees to every other network. Whatever we learn about Twitter hashtag search applies to various degrees over to Facebook, over to Pinterest. Whatever we learn about Pinterest organization via pin boards can apply over to Google Plus communities or Facebook groups. So there's a lot of bleed from the different networks to the different networks. So you get a lot of the idea over and over. It's just that then each network has its own uniqueness, its own unique selling point, what's different about it and its audience. So many social media marketing. Yes? And you say network and platform. Are those interchangeable when you describe Yeah. Yeah, you often hear social media network, social media platform, even social media channel. It's all social media account. It's all the same idea. Many social media marketing ideas. Uh, permeate, permeate to every other network. So what you know in one network applies often to another network. If you learn how to market your business in one network, those ideas apply to various degrees in the other networks. So when we talk about Twitter, in a, uh, when we get hands-on on Twitter in a bit, if you don't quite get it, when we talk about Google Plus next time, we'll see it from a different perspective, and then it might sink in a little bit more. Then when we look at Facebook, we've already had experience in two networks, which will then help you on that third network, which will then help you on the next network. The question is, do I need to know all the networks? Yes and no. Reasons why yes. You'll find the right audience on the right network. There's different demographics. There's different audiences in every network. Uh, people often ask, well, you know, what's the, right, what's the right network for me? I can't quite say that unless you know. I can't quite answer that unless you know who your audience is. If I'm selling products to a young audience, 
it might be this certain network. If I'm selling audience to a, if I'm selling products to a tech savvy audience, it might be that network. So once you know what your own business's audience is, that will help you determine which of the networks might be best for you. No, you don't need to know all the networks because once you know your audience and determine the best network fit, you can then focus only on that network. Short answer, Facebook. Long answer, three months of this class. So Facebook will cover in detail on the third class meeting because to just jump right into it, there's a lot of ideas of marketing that we need to cover first. And we do that on these first two networks, Twitter and then Google+. So, yes? Are the networks audience-driven or business-driven? In other words, do you think, I mean, each network applies to all businesses if that network contains the audience you're trying to attract? You usually can find your audience on every network. People are on a network for a certain reason. I'm on Twitter because I like that it's short and to the point. I'm on Facebook because all my friends and family are on it. I like Pinterest because of what I find on it. So usually your audience is usually to some degree on every network, but you don't quite know that until you start using the network and seeing your data, uh, your feedback to see which one works best. So all the networks started off basically as a way for friends and family to connect. But then, you know, like most companies, it'd be nice to make money off of this. So then the companies, the Facebook company, the Twitter company, the Pinterest company, they said, well, how can we make money off of this? Let's cater to helping businesses reach an audience. So then, therefore, we've got the ability for a company to find an audience on their network. So the big idea, then, is marketing. Marketing, we'll do classic marketing. We'll do digital marketing. Classic marketing or advertising or branding or promotion would be things like a billboard, radio ad, newspaper ad. Uh, what other kinds of classic marketing or advertising do you know? TV ads. What's that? magazines and such and I'm sure they've got an official name but guy on the corner flipping that sign that's another form of marketing all of these are forms of marketing of advertising uh, I, I'm a business I'm a restaurant if I'm a restaurant on Main Street I need clientele I need hungry patrons I need customers so any business really boils down to customers. Now again, this class doesn't only focus on business. If I've got a nonprofit organization, I have volunteers or I have don donations. If I'm a, a writer, if I'm simply a creative writer that I want to put out my stories, I have readers. So I'm going to use the, the term over and over of customers and product, but that's going to apply to, again, anything donations, readership, whatever. So every entity then needs clientele. Every business needs customers. I've got a product to sell. I'm a restaurant. My product is the food. Um, the clientele are the restaurant patrons. So if I start a business on Main Street, am I going to wait for people to walk by Main Street and come in? I may get some amount of customers that way. If I'm in a if I'm in a part of town that is not very walkable, that's going to be a challenge. People are not going to walk in front of my, my restaurant and come in. Maybe I do get walk-ins and then I get word of mouth. They had a really great time at my place. They had a great dinner. Then they tell their friends and family. And then I get more customers. So are walk-ins and word of mouth enough for a restaurant to survive with? Probably not. 
That's when then the restaurant has to invest in a newspaper ad, in a coupon, in the buy one get one magazine, in a radio ad, in a TV ad, in the guy on the corner flipping the sign. So most businesses in the real world have to at some point engage in some form of marketing which is not free. Not free. It takes money to make money. It takes money in paying for the, for the billboard to be on that corner for a few weeks or months. It takes money for that ad to be on the paper for the time. And hopefully you're paying that person flipping the sign minimum wage at least in the hot sun. So it takes money. Well, no problem. I'll just put flyers on people's, on people's windshields. Is that free? It most likely cost you money to print those flyers. Hopefully you didn't use the company printer, because then you're stealing money from the company. Uh, but everything that you're doing, really, maybe even except for the word of mouth, costs you money. Uh, so classic marketing should be no surprise that it costs money to, uh, to, to reach your audience. Digital marketing. Digital advertising is Twitter. Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, etc., etc., etc. Blogging, YouTube, um, Pokemon Go, all of that. All of that digital stuff, that's marketing 2.0. That's digital marketing. That's the purpose of this three month class. How do we use these networks to do the same thing, to reach an audience? The word of mouth is not going to be good enough. I'm going to use these networks to find an audience. So I could tweet a hashtag. I could boost a Facebook post. I could create a Snapchat geo filter. All of the things we'll be talking about in this class that are the new forms of marketing. And all of these free to get started. But with paid options. It's free to tweet. It's free to post on Facebook. It's free to Snapchat. It's free to Instagram. It's free to create all of these accounts it's free to use them. There are options where you can pay to reach more of an audience. And right away people say, I'm gonna pay to, to use Twitter, I'm gonna pay to use Facebook. I've used it for free for 10 years. Yeah, you've used it for free for 10 years with friends and family. But now we're talking about business. And so in the old, in the classic marketing, that TV ad is not free, that radio ad is not free, the person on the corner flipping that sign shouldn't be free, according to California labor laws. So digital marketing for a business, you should realize, is not free when you get to a certain point. We'll talk about that. We'll cover the free and paid aspects of all of these networks. Let's say with classic marketing. Let's say I'm going to put a TV ad. I'm a restaurant. I have 500 channels on the dial to choose from. I'm a restaurant. What channels might be a good idea to put my restaurant ad on? Food network. Food network. Cooking channel. Home and life network. Etc. Food related channels. Family related channels. What about local channels? Yeah. So if I've got if I want to reach the right audience on TV, I've got a cooking, uh, uh, I've got a, uh, a restaurant, uh, it might not make a lot of sense to put my ad on a financial channel. People aren't watching the financial channel quite exactly for, for that. They're watching it for financial news. Now, of course, a person who is watching the financial channel is going to get hungry one day, and seeing your ad for your restaurant might make them hungry, and they go to your restaurant, of course. That always happens. You're going to find an audience on any channel. 
But if it's costing you money, why would you put your ad on the wrong channel? You'd put it at the right channel at the right time, at the time when people are hungry, the family hour on the local channel to tell them we're open, family, family style restaurant, come on over. So in classic marketing, you have to pick the right channel, time, to reach the right audience. Same thing for uh, print. There are various magazines out there. There's magazines on technology, on business, on food. So if I put my food-related business in a food-related magazine, I might reach the best audience, as opposed to the video game-related magazine. Unless my food is, you know, chips and, and Mountain Dew and such, uh, I might not reach the right audience in the right kind of uh, magazine. Digital marketing is the same sort of way. But the challenge with classic marketing, it's often hard to determine the right audience. That billboard, I put a billboard on the street. If I put one billboard in one corner, that's only going to reach a certain amount of people. If I, re if I put the billboard on the five, obviously during rush hour, a lot of people are going to see it. A lot of people are going to see it, but not necessarily then call. I'm a plumber, I put my billboard on the five, a lot of people see it, no one calls until they need a plumber. Well, if I put that billboard that I'm a plumber on more than one street, more people will see it. Maybe I'll put that billboard near a residential area. Someone had a water leak, they see my billboard, I'm a plumber, they call me. So I have to do some guesswork, I have to do this expense to put my ads, my real world ads in the right place for the right people. With digital marketing, we have a, a lot of power to find the right audience. It may be a lot easier to find your audience via social media. We will look at the paid and the non-paid ways that we can do this. Uh, we'll do it in detail, of course, but just in general, we could do uh, hashtag searches, we could do boosted posts, etc. We'll, we'll get into it on detail. But we do have to think about, and I'm mentioning it early on, we won't have to do it until later, but uh, later on I will cover the paid aspects of these net networks. I'm not going to ask you to pay anything in the class, of course, but I'm going to show you how it's how it's how it works and how you set it up and such and then you can decide decide if you want to invest in that or not because like in the real world it takes money to make money in the digital world it takes money to make money but you can go pretty far for free and then eventually if you decide well I need to reach more of an audience what, what I'm getting right now out of Facebook is not quite working so if I invest a little bit into Facebook ads and such it could help and the great thing about digital marketing compared to classic marketing is it can be very, very, very affordable. With as little as a dollar, you'll be able to reach more of an audience digitally than you could without paying. You can't get very far with a dollar in real-world marketing. Um, you know, you're spending dozens or hundreds of dollars in real-world real, real world marketing. And of course you can spend hundreds of dollars in digital marketing to reach even more of an audience. But we'll see later that even with a little, a little, uh, as little as a dollar, you can reach more of an audience. So all of these concepts that I'm talking about here so far apply in general to all the social networks. Today's idea will be Twitter and its uniqueness. Then we'll cover the other networks and what's unique about them. But all of them are basically a marketing platform, a way to advertise and reach an audience. Any questions so far? Okay, so no, we don't we don't quite cover Yelp. That's probably something I'll be covering in a future iteration of the class. Uh, I, I'll kind of touch on it here and there, but that's another can of worms to get into Yelp. Yeah. So the. Um, on these networks, commonalities, 
commonalities of social networks. They all have a version of this. They may name it differently, and I'll note that as we get into them. We often have a full name and a username and a URL. Full name, the name of your business. Not unique. Username, the name of your business. Unique. URL, the address of your business. Unique. So what I mean by this, I usually use a fictional business in all of these classes, Victor's Bakery. So let's say I've got this business, Victor's Bakery, it's on Main Street, and it sells baked goods. It sells cookies and cakes and birthday cakes and pies and sticker doodles and chocolate chip cookies. It's a bakery. So I want clientele. The purpose of Victor's Bakery is to sell cookies and cupcakes and so forth. Well, I need customers to buy my baked goods. So I need to invest in marketing, either real world or digital. I'm going to get on Twitter. I took a class, and the instructor seemed to know what he was talking about, and he said Twitter was good. So I'm going to get on Twitter. I then have to fill out an account, and we'll see how to do it in a moment, where it'll ask for a full name, where people think, OK, I'll put my name, Victor Campos. No, the full name is the name of your business. So when we create the account, I would put Victor's Bakery as the full name of my account on Twitter, or Facebook, or Pinterest, or Google+, etc. They all have these three things in common. Not unique. I'll get back to that in a moment. I then have to pick a username. What is the unique username where people can find me as in the network? Usernames often do not allow spaces and special characters. I've got a space and a special character in my name, an apostrophe and a space. So I'd have to get Victor's Bakery. No space, no apostrophe. That's the username. It's a simplified version of your name. Oftentimes, there's also a limit. I may be Victor's Amazing Bakery. That's what the name of the business is. Then when I try to get Victor's Amazing Bakery on Twitter, it only has enough space for that. Victor's Amazing Back. There's not enough space in the username. Oftentimes there is a limit of 12 to 15 characters or so in a username. So then I have to be creative and maybe call this Vix Amaze Bakery. I have to figure out what can I fit within the limitations of the username. And again, all the networks have some sort of limitation like this. Some of them are a little longer, very common to be at around 15 characters. No special characters, no spaces, no dashes, no exclamation points, etc. Depending on the network, there may be a little bit more leeway. Capital letters don't matter, so I could have Victor's Bakery like that as opposed to capital letters. It's just that I kind of like and I kind of recommend for people to use capital letters as a way for it to be readable. Right now, this is running together. It's hard to read. But if I create this with a capital letters, it's a little easier to read because I don't have spaces. If a person types it with uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter. It will go to my proper account. So some notes further here. The name, usually longer, can have special characters, exclamation points, spaces, dashes, etc. Username, usually short, cannot have special characters. Sometimes they allow an underscore, like that. Capitalization doesn't matter. But it's useful for readability, for the person being able to read it.
URL should be obvious. It is your unique web address. So therefore, HTTP colon slash slash twitter.com, facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. The address, 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, is your username plus the name of the network. Twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery. Facebook.com slash Victor's Amazing Bakery. So your address is directly tied to your username. And your, your username and your address are both unique, but your full name is not. Meaning, more than one company could try to set up a Victor's Amazing Bakery. And the network will let them. If I go right now to Twitter and try to create an account, um, San Diego Continuing Education, it'll let me even though San Diego Continuing Education already exists. If I try to create a brand new account on Twitter called Domino's Pizza, full name, it will let me, even though it already exists. Where it will stop me from proceeding is the username and the URL, the unique address. Only one account in the world can have Domino's Pizza, can have twitter.com slash Domino's Pizza. So that's what I mean about unique. Only one account in the world can have the short name and the address. But any accounts in the world can have the long, the full name. So only one account in the world, these networks are global, only one account in the world can have that username. As for the URL, only one account in the world can have that URL because it's tied to the username. Then I get into problems. Twitter's been around over 10 years. Facebook's been around c coming on 15 years. So if I'm barely thinking of getting onto Facebook or Twitter or most of these networks that have been around a decade, my name, my username might, might have already been taken one or two or 10 years ago. And therefore, I cannot take it myself. Victor's Bakery was taken by a Victor's Bakery in New York three years ago. So I have to decide Victor's underscore bakery. Oh, that one was taken by a, a bakery in London. Okay, well, I'm going to do Victor's underscore, Victor two underscores. Well, that one was taken by a, a, a bakery in Manila. So I have to figure out the Victor's Bakery, the original Victor's Bakery. But then I have the limit of those 15 characters. So that sometimes is a struggle, especially now with over a decade of social networks. This ties into a bit back over where I had, do I need to know all of the networks? I had yes and no. Here's another reason why yes, to at least Claim your name. Claim your username. Maybe you never are going to use LinkedIn for your business or never going to use Snapchat. Actually, now suddenly it's very important to be on Snapchat. I go claim it. Whoops, someone, some teenager took it in Topeka. So I can't take it. I need to be the Victor's Bakery on Snapchat, but I'm Victor's Bakery everywhere else. That's annoying. So that when people want to check me out on Snapchat, they go to their account instead of mine. So one thing you can do is at least claim the name and hold on to it if you're going to use it. At least have minimal information on it. Maybe you're not going to use it, but you have your phone number there. People then can call you. So at least claim your name to at least have basic contact info. And yeah, there's literally hundreds of social networks out there, even though you may think, well, there's three or four. Twitter, I've heard of Twitter, I've heard of Facebook, I've heard of Pinterest. I guess I've heard of Instagram. There's lots and lots and lots of networks out there. Very niche networks, very broad networks. You don't need to have your name on all of them, but you never know. There may be a network that becomes hot. No one thought, you know, Snapchat would be popular. It's pretty popular. Maybe I don't understand Snapchat. That's fine. Just claim your name. So if you do eventually learn Snapchat, you can use Snapchat. And if you have your basic info there, that's useful. 
So a few more commonalities, then we'll actually set up an account. Uh, how many of you actually at the moment have either a personal or business Twitter account right now? A few people. How many of you have a business Twitter account? A couple people. How many of you have a personal or business Facebook? Most people. How many of you have a business Facebook? A couple people. So we're going to see that there's personal versus business. You can create one or the other. We're going to focus on, of course, the business version. And in these classes, I'm going to recommend that even if you already have one of these networks, one of these accounts set up, I recommend still to create a new one. These are free to set up. Uh, you can then set them up, create them, play with them, make mistakes and all of that, learn from it, and then apply those concepts, that knowledge to your real account. You can delete this you know, educational temporary fake account. You can create it and play with it and then delete it and apply what you learn on your real account eventually. And I recommend that instead of trying to do what we're going to learn directly to your real account. If you're new to all of this, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to stumble, you're going to do it wrong, you're going to do it on your real account and that may be harmful for the future. So I do recommend we create a new account as we will talk about that during class. Every uh, network also has they call them in different ways. I'll call them right here simply content. Twitter calls it a tweet. Pinterest calls it a pin. Snapchat calls it a snap. They might have different names. This is content, so it's what you share or post to the network, which could be text, pictures, links, video, sound, just about anything. And back in the day when Twitter was only 140 characters, that's a really short paragraph, like half a paragraph. And people would say, well, how is this even going to work? to market my business. I can't tell you how amazing my business is in 140 characters. Well, now we've got 280, and that's still pretty short. But it's not just, on, not just only text that you can put on Twitter. You can attach a picture. Um, I think like up to four or 10 pictures or something. So you can attach a picture of your amazing product and then explain it in the text. You can attach a link. You show a picture of your product. You explain it in the text. You link it to buy it you can go over on Facebook and do the same thing. Create a short video about your product, why it's amazing, and then have a link, click here to buy it. We'll go into the nuances of all of that, of course, but all of the networks have a way to share some content. They call them different things. All the networks have some sort of feedback. How your customers react the common one on Facebook if someone enjoys your funny cat picture what can they do thumbs up like for a long time you had the thumbs up like on Facebook and people wanted well if I like something I can thumbs up it but if I don't like something can I thumbs down it and for a long time, there was no negative reaction on Facebook. They were always just thumbs up. Then eventually, Facebook gave more reactions. The thumbs up, the little wow face, the, the little angry face. What other things are there? Um, hearts. There's different reactions on Facebook. But they're all some sort of positive, simple reaction. A positive, simple reaction. Um, if you use Twitter and I tweet something, someone can like it. They used to call it a favorite. I think now it's just called a like also. If you use Twitter, you can get another kind of reaction besides a like. We'll get to that one in a moment. What's another? That we'll get to that one in a moment. What's another? Uh, how do they keep the conversation going? A reply. So we often have a reply in any of these sorts of networks, which is the person 
you know, writes something back to you. I post a great looking photo on Twitter. I post a great looking image on Instagram. People can like them on all those networks. Yes, people can also reply. They can say, great photo, looks yummy, excellent, where do I buy this? They have a reply as another kind of a reaction or feedback. Yes? There are nuances on every network that'll make more sense as we look at it on each network. But like on Twitter, for example, if I do a reply, I would s if someone replies to my tweet, I would see it directly. It may show up for other people too. And on Facebook, often what you do see is the reply does get sent to more people, but it depends on the network. Yes? Um, yeah, it's fair for me to assume that you're going to go over those features on how we can either keep our comments or other people's comments privately versus just putting us on blast. Yes, but usually the purpose of learning this for this class is for it to be public. Uh, if we want things private, it's usually for personal purposes. Uh, and I will cover personal and private, but usually because we're a business, for example, I'm putting an ad on the newspaper, I want everyone to see it. If I don't want a lot of people to see that, I would put that ad in the newsletter that only 10 people get in the real world. In the digital world, same sort of thing. I want as many people as possible to see this stuff on these different networks to reach more of an audience. But yes, I will cover how to do things private or public. But for business, usually you want it all public. And we'll see why and the pros and cons as we do it. So a person writes something. We'll see its value. Different networks call it different things. We'll see why that's useful when we get to it. And then on Twitter, for the example, people were saying a retweet. Uh, perhaps a more uh, generic term is share. Some of them I call it reshare, retweet. This is a person forwarded or passed along your content to their, friend, their friends. So I'm on Twitter, I tweet a, a picture of my product. Someone really liked it, they did a retweet. So now it goes to their followers, friends of friends, sort of. Facebook, very similar. I post something, one of my friends sees it, they then reshare it to their wall to their friends so more people see it. Basically, uh, going viral. Let's say I've got 10 followers on Instagram. I post a photo of my product with a link to buy. One of those 10 followers really liked it and passed it along to more people. Well, they've got 100 followers. I now reached 110 people. The original 10 that I had direct plus the extra 100 that that person had that they had of their popularity. And then one of those people of those 100 has 10,000 followers. And that person liked it and passed it to their 10,000. I reached then 10,110 people out of my small circle. That's going viral, reaching more and more people. Of course, in all of these, I'm talking about best case scenario. And uh, we'll talk about how to entice these results and how to try to go viral or how to reach more people, of course. We'll cover that in various ways throughout the length of the course. Of course. Yes. Is that why the uh, million people say uh, million hits? Is that how they get like those million hits? Just million hits or million followers? Yes, you have a lot of an audience. It could be that I directly am popular enough that I've got a million followers, therefore I reach a million people. Or it could be that I've got you know only five thousand followers, but then it reaches the right people and it reaches more and more and more people. So. These are the three very th uh, three common types of feedback that have various values, and there's actually one more. On most of these networks, there's the w there's one more way that a person shows like the ultimate positiveness or enjoyment of your content, 
Anyone know, perhaps? What's one more way that people show they really liked your stuff? Bye. Uh, okay, that's another one. We'll get to that one. <laughs> he said bye, but that's another one. What's that? Mention. Mention. That's related to replies. There's a follow. 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 So a person chooses to subscribe, in a sense. Um, that could be that a reply and a mention are different, but I kind of categorize them somewhat in the same way, in that uh, they are related. Well, we'll get to the details about that, but that's a possible way. The person chooses to subscribe to your account, therefore keeps up to date with your content. If they see that what you're tweeting about is very valuable, they want to see it all the time in their inbox, basically, they can click follow. If they see what is in your Facebook and they really like it all the time, they can, they can follow or, or subscribe or like or whatever the term is. They can keep up to date with what you're doing on a regular basis. They can subscribe to you. They like your videos on YouTube, they'll subscribe. They, they want to keep seeing it more and more and more. They, they follow you. Um, based on the content or the structure of the network itself, these are four types of feedback or reactions that you could get. I put them in this order because of their value. A like is the lowest value. It's not bad, but it's the lowest value. What's bad is no reaction. I tweet all day long and no one follows, no one replies, no one likes, that's bad, no actions. So like is not bad, it's just it's the lowest one because I saw something cool, I click like, move on, what's next? Something else cool, like that, move on, what's next? It doesn't stick in a person's mind very much. The next level up is a person takes a moment to click reply and maybe they just say great, nice job, thumbs up, but they took a little bit more extra time to interact with you and we will see that we get all of these feedbacks as notifications which then gives us the ability to further do more things as we'll see later but we will see that perhaps the person that replied is more valuable or more serious to buy our product the next level up has more value of a share because then someone enjoyed your content so much that they're helping become a free advertiser free publicity for you they've spread your message, your, your tweet, your Facebook post, your pin to more people going out further. Very valuable. And then the ultimate one right here is the follow because then they've chosen to keep up to date at all times with your content. They have a built-in captive audience. Yes, then the real ultimate one of all is buy, but that's a little bit out of the control of the network. Question? Yeah, that's something that's always I make a post, somebody likes it, that doesn't show up on their TV, it's just like, it's just a, okay, this is cool, move on. Is that correct? So in other words, like, when, I'm, when I make a post, people who follow me get to see it, mm -hmm. they like it, that just goes to my feed. It doesn't add that post to their feed so that the people following them can see it. Is that correct? Pretty much. Each network changes a little bit, but we will get into the detail of who sees what. That's where there is the differences on the different networks. Facebook is one of the ones that is sort of the most liberal about it in that something shares and goes viral into a lot of places. That's one of the cool things about it. Um, the other networks are, are a little bit more uh, that they um, you have to kind of work a little bit more to reach more people. And we'll see the... The short answer is that yes, the person has to usually share it explicitly for them for it to go to their connections. But depending on the network, it could spread out a little easier, and then we will see the nuances of it as we do it per network. So there, there is then that ultimate one. The ultimate feedback is the buy, although that one's a little bit out of the scope of the network. A lot of these networks, what they can do is lead a horse to water, but they can't make it drink. They then 
you have to rely that it's a great photo, it's a great piece of text, it's a great video, it's a great enticing message to click buy. So that is the ultimate one, but we'll see how that's a little harder. As a social media marketer, that's what we're going to become. Market, marketer. As a social media marketer, um, we are always chasing followers. We're always trying to increase our follower number. Um, followers are your captive audience. Your um, your your customers. Yes. Usually on most networks, yes. A person can see who else is following you and who you are following. So followers are your captive audience. They're your customers. They're your, let me say, your potential customers. Because one follower does not equal one sale. We wish that were true. We wish that my 100 followers would be 100 customers. Uh, it is. It is not. Does not work that way. Oftentimes, the reality. One percent of your followers are your real customers. Real sales. Again, I talk about sales and products and all of that. But what if simply I'm just an artist, I want to show my paintings on my website, I'm not selling, but I want to drive traffic to my website for people to see my beautiful paintings. I have 100 followers. What's 1% 1 of 100? One. So depending on what I'm trying to accomplish online, that number is higher or lower, of course. But a good rule of thumb is that 1% of your followers are often the real results, the sale, the buy, the subscribe etc and that's a very low number but in the real world that's also comparable I put that sign I put that billboard on the five thousands of people will see it especially during rush hour does that mean I'm gonna get thousands of sales out of that billboard no. thousands of people will see my ad on TV will I get thousands of sales thousands of people will see my ad on the on the radio or hear my hear my ad on the radio nope they won't I won't make sales just because a thousand people hear my ad on the radio doesn't mean a thousand sales. The, the actual result is very low. So that's why we're trying to build followers more and more and more. 1% of 100 is 1. 1% 1 of 1,000 is 10. 1% uh, 1 of 10,000 is 100. Yeah, 10,000 sounds like, uh, that's a lot. I'm never going to be able to get 10,000 followers. Maybe. Probably. But the more that you get, and through the various techniques we'll talk about in the class, we'll try to increase that to be even higher to get real results. Because it may look great that I've got 1,000 followers, but again, that doesn't mean 1,000 sales. Maybe I only consistently make 10 sales. Well, that's still great. 10 sales out of a free account I set up that I put time and effort into to build an audience that might be good enough if it's not quite working that's when I can then invest in the paid versions of these networks to try to bump up that to 5 percent 10 percent maybe I'm maybe I'm spending ten dollars a month on Facebook to reach more of an audience and that results in you know, a hundred sales, and it was worth it. Maybe I'm spending five hundred dollars on Twitter ads per year, and that's resulting in ten thousand dollars in sales. So you have to get it out of your mind that I'm going to pay real money to these networks to reach an audience. That sounds like a ripoff. Yeah, it's a ripoff. Just like in the real world, it's a ripoff to pay for that billboard and to pay for that radio ad and to pay for the person flipping that sign. In the real world, we have to pay for marketing. 
and, and businesses that succeed know this. That's why you see ads all over the place. McDonald's has been around 70 years and they still do ads every single day. Coca-Cola has and Pepsi have been around over a hundred years and they keep doing ads. Nike has been around decades. Our school, you know, San Diego City College has been around a hundred years and we do ads. We need to get the word out always because there's so much competition for people's attention. So we have to use social media and most likely at a certain point it's valuable for you to invest real money into these networks to reach an audience but it can be as little as a dollar and as much as how much you got. So we'll see how that works. There's a lot of theory at the moment. We'll put it into practice in a little bit, but let's take our first break. Uh, it's 11.05. We'll take a break until 11.15. Uh, we'll be back at 11.15 and we'll go on to actually set this up.